$1.4 billion. That is double the $700 million valuation that you had in 2022. So a big up round. What are you planning to do with the money? Well, you know, we started with spring water in a can back in 2019. Um, and then we started expanding into sparkling. And then in 2022, we launched a first flavored sparkling, which we actually use four grams of sugar from agave. So it's kind of more like a healthy soda. Um, that did really well for us when we launched it. We quickly became the number two flavored sparkling on Amazon within months. And then we launched iced tea. Uh, last year, that's become really successful. We're the number one iced tea. So really, now that we've proven out that we're a multi-category brand, um, you know, we're really looking to now expand within those categories. We started with three flavors um, with iced tea and both uh, flavored sparkling. Now we're continuing uh, to expand those categories. Well, tell us what's next, because, of course, you've got regular water, sparkling water, flavored water as you ran through. What else are you looking into when it comes to the product lineup? I mean, really what... Our mission is, is to be a healthy beverage platform. I think uh, you look at the marketing, most of the funny, irreverent, cool marketing you've seen for companies, it's almost always for unhealthy things. It's beer, junk food, candy, energy drinks. Uh, I think what we're doing is how do you make better for you things that are marketed in the same funny way, essentially, as things like beer. So anything that's healthy, I mean, that's kind of where, where we look from an innovation standpoint. Mike, I agree. I think it's really metal to care about your body. But talk to us a little bit more about beer. You've said in the past that you have been inspired by beer brands. Like you said, the marketing around some of those products. Is that a category that you would ever explore the alco alcoholic beverage lineup? Or are you going to stick to that sort of better for you vibe? No, we really want to stick to better for you. Um, I think that's what makes... Um, that's the interesting DNA of liquid death. I mean, not only better for you, but our whole death to plastic mission of, you know, helping to get rid of uh, plastic bottles with recyc infinitely recyclable aluminum cans. There's companies that do good. There's companies that are funny. There's rarely the two together. And I think that's what makes the interesting uh, liquid death brand and DNA. Well, we need to talk about marketing a little bit more. I see you have a pretty scary little guy on your shirt there, of course, advertising liquid death. And I see you on TikTok. I see you on Instagram, for example. It seems like this very ground up, grassroots approach. What is your approach, though, when it comes to marketing? Is that really where you're going to be sticking? Or do you have any big plans to really push out? Well, I don't know if there's too many people who would consider social media grassroots. Uh, <laughs> I mean, social media has overtaken traditional television and media years ago. I mean, you look at the average person, they are spending their time on their phone, not on television sets. Even if you look on the freeway, people aren't even, aren't even looking at billboards. You look around in their cars, people are on their phones in their cars. So I think we're just building a brand for the modern age of where people's attention is. And it's, the data's there. Most of people's attention is spent on social media. And what you have to do to win on those platforms is very different than what brands had to do to win on television in the 90s or the 80s. Well, Mike, to be clear, if they're in the car, they shouldn't be on their phones if they're in the driver's seat. But I take your point that that is absolutely where the eyeballs are. But I do want to talk about distribution and how you push out into convenience stores and the like. Uh, it's interesting. You think about energy drinks, Celsius, for example. They partnered with Pepsi last year to handle distribution for them. How do you handle distribution over at Liquid Death? Well, very similar to Celsius and Monster Energy, um, these brands were both built um, in the beer distribution network. Um, and, you know, the beer distribution networks, they've gotten a lot better at distributing non-alk products. Um, so we have a really great uh, partnership, you know, heavy in the Anheuser-Busch uh, independent distribution network, and many of those distributors um, participated as part of this recent funding round. So, you know, we have a really great um, partnership with, with our network that's getting us into all the convenience stores and grocery stores and uh, the different places where, where Liquid Death sells, including the on-premise uh, bars, nightclubs. Liquid Death is one of the few non-alk brands besides Red Bull that's actually selling in bars and, and the on-premise channel. Talk to me a little bit more about how that works. It's always something I find interesting when it comes to distribution of some of these uh, beverages. Is that really the only way to cut it in this environment, that you have to partner with one of the heavyweights to handle that for you? For the most part, yeah. I think um, you have to, you know, they call it DSD uh, distribution. That is our route to market. 
Um, and yeah, you can't really be in the Coke or Pepsi network unless Coke or Pepsi owns you. The beer network is interesting because the big beer companies, because of alcohol laws, they're only allowed to own 20% of their distribution network. So 80% of that network is all independently owned. So you can go in and get distribution without you know, doing a corporate uh, partnership, which is unique uh, in, in that space. So um, yeah, I think when you can build um, a, a DSD route to market with a partner that cares about the brand, that understands it and wants to push it along their other brands, it can be you know, massively successful. And I do want to talk about what's next, because if you take a look, I mean, the information reported last year that you hired Goldman to lead a potential IPO. I won't ask you about that specifically, but when it comes to IPOs and other sorts of branching out there, maybe a sale, how are you thinking about that, of course, as Liquid Death really continues to grow quite rapidly? Well, I think the unique thing about Liquid Death that I'm not sure there's really any other beverage brand that's done is you know, we are winning in completely different categories under the same brand name. There, there are companies that have created individual brands per category, but I think because we've truly shown we can win in plain water and flavored sparkling and now iced tea, you know, we're really excited about preserving optionality. You know, I think we can build a massive profitable business with a huge TAM given that we've proven it, this thing can transcend categories. So we're really just focused on building a huge business, um, continuing to increase our margins, get smarter about every aspect of supply chain. Um, and then if we're able to do that, we're going to have a lot of options in terms of whether that is IPO or whether that is a strategic partnership. Right. So, I, was, I mean, I was going to say, it sounds like in preserving optionality, that means that an IPO is something that you're thinking about. Could you just talk us through sort of the decision process? What goes into that? I think there's a lot of things. I mean, really, you know, we look at, hey, what stage is the business at? Where's the market at? Um, you know, what other, what other options are out there? And at the end of the day, we're going to make the smartest decision for what brings the most value um, to our shareholders. And all of our employees in our company are shareholders. So uh, it's not just uh, investors. So yeah, we're just going to look at where, where's the most value. And I think um, looking at brands like Celsius and Monster, um, you know, it, IPO and that path is an exciting path that we would want as an option. And we're going to do everything um, that we need to do to make sure that's even an option if, if we want it. Yeah. And I mean, you look at the uh, share prices of Celsius and Monster and they have just been on fire. Truly something to watch. But Mike, before I let you go, talk to me a little bit more about your investors, because a one point four billion dollar valuation, that is quite hefty at this point. I mentioned some actors, some athletes, but who's investing at li in liquid death at this stage? Yeah, like, um, you know, what came out in the press. I mean, we've got a couple of new investors like Suro Capital, uh, Grays Creek. We had um, existing investors like Live Nation who wanted to, to reinvest as part of this round. Um, and yeah, when you look at the valuation, I mean, look at Celsius right now. Celsius, I think, is trading at 18 times revenue. I mean, we are not being valued at 18 times uh, our, our revenue this round. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of people were excited about um, the growth potential of the brand, the growth that we've had until now, um, you know, just starting in 2019. And uh, I think everybody was excited about, um, you know, being a part of the round and that, you know, Liquid Death is really just getting started. 